Hello everyone, Fro here for another vanilla-ish Let's Play episode. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we're going to start this episode off with a boss fight. Before we do that, I wanted to address a couple comments we got in episode 45. And the very first comment here is from Marcelesco, and he says, Now, the catacombs look amazing. So thank you for that, I appreciate the feedback. Um, you also said, I think you could use some lower light levels with items like blaze powder or blaze rods to make the hallways look very dim. So yeah, since we have Optifine installed, then, oh, did you see that flickering over there? Um, since we have Optifine installed, then Blaze Powder and Blaze Rods will um, act as a light source as well. So here's an example, right? The problem is, is they don't work in item frames. So if I plop it in there, you know, it doesn't work. So I don't know if these are gonna work um, just because of that. The other reason why I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to try them is because they rely on Optifine and is and and I'm using Optifine right now but there's no guarantee I'm always going to be using it so I'm a little, little hesitant but we could try doing this with the statues have them show their arms and then give you a blaze rod maybe that'll work and then let's get rid of all the torches in this kind of general area yeah that kind of that kind of works it's actually kind of a good idea so I appreciate that comment. Let's try to give you blaze powder because I think that's slightly dimmer. Yeah, it's a little bit dimmer. Uh, the other idea I had was to use redstone torches somehow. <laughs> I don't know where, but those are pretty dim too. I don't know. We'll have to play with that, but that's an awesome suggestion. Thank you for it. The other thing you said um, is you said that I should leave a few flower pots empty. Um, for more variation, which is a fantastic idea, and that you should pick other colors. When I think about it, picking red um, and orange was kind of a bad idea because, like you said, they don't contrast very well. And so I was thinking maybe we pick white flowers for all of them. Uh, and my reason behind it is white is usually what we, what you use for mourning, I think, or something, or or at least we create like a, a little bit more of a theme. I think I am going to keep some of the red flowers around though. But yeah, adding the white ones in, they pop a little bit more. And there's still that yellow on the inside, so it still kind of blends in and matches. So, same for here. So, I like that. Thank you for that suggestion. And we can keep some empty. So, why don't we keep one of these empty? We'll keep this one empty. <laughs> Just for the variation, like you said. I am recording this episode basically immediately after my previous one, so if I'm not replying to your comment in the video, I apologize. I will try really hard to get you in the comment section, um, but a lot of you said to replace the cyan terracotta we had here, or, or concrete or whatever, with spruce, so I went ahead and did that, and also to get rid of the fences and replace them with the flowers. So thank you for the suggestions and feedback, I appreciate that. You guys are awesome, seriously. And I'm really sad about losing these pants because these are actually a unique item. And they were actually really good um, armor. Like, look at that. Plus 10 armor. And then more importantly, the armor toughness. So just for reference, armor toughness protects against really high damage mobs, um, which the stat pack has a lot of. Um, finally, I do have one last thing I wanted to address for Marcelesco's comment. Um, you said for the armor statue stat pack, just use the move 8 instead of the 6 or three, three, and two that I did, um, and that'll move it over exactly half a block. Thank you for the pro tip. I've never used the nudge feature before until that episode, so thank you. Any other tips would be awesome. And <laughs> where do I live where it gets so cold? Basically Canada, that's what I'm gonna say. And Todd13 looked up what these shelf things are called, and they're called loculus. And the plural of that is loculi, and apparently they mean little place which kind of makes sense because, you know, they're small. Um, but yeah, this is where like the bodies get put and then they're normally plastered over so you actually can't see them. But because it's been thousands of years and they've been looting and stuff, now they look just like shelves when you're underground. Um, and actually, they're normally made out of stone. So I might switch all of these out from acacia planks to what we have over here. I don't know. What do you guys think? Would that be a good idea? But thanks for looking that up, Todd. I appreciate it because now I can call them by their actual name and, you know, sound a little bit more professional. 
All right, so we need to start gearing up for this boss fight. Uh, it's actually going to be a unique one. We actually have a spawn egg that comes with it. It comes, it's a pufferfish spawn egg. Um, but it's going to be an interesting boss fight if it's anything like the videos I've been watching on it. But let's get geared up first. So first of all, yeah, we have a backup pair of these really awesome armor. It's got Curse of Vanishing. It's only got Unbreaking. So we got to enchant that. And also we need to enchant this helmet. And also I was thinking we got to bring some potions here and I wanted to try some of these out as well. They give you strength four, absorption four, and hunger five. So those actually are really good for fighting because hunger allows you to eat more often, which means you can heal more often. And we got our super totem of undying. I'm actually going to grab a couple more just in case things go south on us. So we'll just bring, whoa, those are really good. We'll just bring a couple of them. Alrighty, so we are back at Death Island right now, and we're going to be fighting the Angel Boss Mob by Legit Moose. So I think all we have to do is just drop this spawn egg on the ground. And I picked this boss mob because holy cow, do the animations and um, texture and stuff look amazing. So let's get th get this uh, show on the road. Oop. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh. Okay, so they spawn like, there's like four stages to this, by the way. I don't know how strong this boss mob is or if it's even done. Let's see. Let's see how strong this guy is. Oh, that's not good. Uh-oh. Okay. Yeah, come get me. Where are your cats? Go away. <laughs> so far, he hasn't hit me once. Are you going to attack me? I don't know if he's done, to be honest. I'm pretty sure he has, though. I mean, go away. Should have killed this rabbit before we started. There we go. So, yeah, he does a little bit of damage. Also, remember that, you know, he's probably balanced for vanilla Minecraft, and we are obviously not quite vanilla. And his cats are supposed to damage us, but I, I don't really get any damage. But look at that animation. That's insane. I can't believe this is just done with data packs. All right. Uh, let's maybe hit him. What happens if we hit him? Anything? Now he's not a cat anymore. Now he's something else. Like their heads are kind of rotating. Oh, he's a cat again. So I don't think it's done by stages. Like it doesn't matter what health he's at. They just kind of rotate between the three different stages. Now he's like a horse. Yeah, they're kind. Of, he's kind of weak. He's obviously not balanced for someone as powerful as us. Come on, you can attack me. Don't don't be shy. And then, okay, so then when they turn into that other one, the eagle, it looks like, then it's the explosion. And then the cat, or the lion, drops these cat lasers and do just a little bit of damage. All right, let's take him down. Well, he's kind of hard to hit. What? Can't, like, hit him. <laughs> Okay, now he's going to do the charge attack. Okay, so we hit him. <laughs> Was that it? Just a one hitter, huh? But we got this awesome mob head. Let's look at this. Oh. I guess you can't. At least on the ground. This data pack might not be finished, but what happens when we put it on our head? Yeah, it's just a skeleton. Interesting. Or unless maybe I have the resource packs not uh, not done right, but cool. Well, that was a fun little experiment. Well, we might have to revisit that when it's more fleshed out. All right, backup plan. We're going to fight the Wraith instead, but check this out. I've been noticing this. Every time I fly over to our island, all the mushrooms seem to prefer mycelium. Right? Like... It's like I can build a, a whole horde without a fence at all because it looks like they kind of just in general stick around here. I wonder if that's intentional. It's got to be at this point because they've been like this for months now. All right, drop the block on the ground. Summons. I'm going to go sleep quick so that we can fight him in peace, even though I guess it doesn't matter that much. And my goal this time is to kill him like as fast as possible, which reminds me we should probably drink this potion. Switch to Golden Carrot. Oh, oh. OK, 
Okay, let's take him down. We only have two minutes of strength four. Whoa, that was a good hit. Yeah, he's definitely ta um, a lot weaker. Or rather, we're a lot stronger now. I'm wearing actual armor instead of like that kind of junkier stuff. Boom, we got him. Let's see if he dropped anything good. We didn't really get anything that good from this first fight. Good thing we brought extra so we can fight him again. Let's get started with round two here. Gotta get airborne because the others the weather won't stop. Oh, that's a good first hit. Okay. So when he's flying up like this, that's when it's usually best to attack him straight on with a melee weapon. And when he's charging you, that's when it's best to use your bow. Because then when he's charging you, if you hit him with a bow, he'll stop attacking. So like right now he's charging, so I should have bowed instead of swung with my axe. Again, he was charging. The only difference is I'm a lot tankier now than when we fought him the last time. So it doesn't really matter that much. Although he's getting a couple good hits on us. But we have our regen, which helps a lot. Right? Sometimes it works. Right now it's not working. Give me regen. Maybe it's because I'm in the air. Oh, that's why. If you're flying, then the regen doesn't work. Huh. All right, where'd he go? So he's charging us, so attack. And then he'll fly away a little bit. Ouch. Okay. Gotta heal up. Oh yeah, he's a lot weaker now. Oh man, he dodged. And boom. Couple more hits. One more and we got him. Hopefully he dropped the wings this time. Because that would be really nice. Anything? I don't see him. Oh! He dropped a clock! I wonder what that is. Another clock! What are these? Eye of Kronos. Uh, they're okay. 11% speed boost and a little bit of attack bonus. That's it. I think. Hold on. Let me not drown. Those who can see the future are destined to change it. So they increase your attack speed a little bit, as well as your normal speed. But otherwise, they're just kind of a clock. And we got two of them, which is kind of strange, but... You know what? I'll take it. That's awesome. It's a unique item. Alrighty, well that's enough boss battling for today. Let's move on to something else. To start with, we gotta do something with the Butcher here. Uh, I actually don't really have any ideas for what we can do. And just remember, he's that he's a unique boss mob from the RPG data pack, and he hits pretty hard, so we have to be kind of careful um, with whatever we decide to do with him. Um, speaking of boss battles, though, there is one more um, big boss in this data pack that I want to fight, and his name is Carlos, and he's like a giant slime, but uh, he does a lot of environmental damage as well. He shoots off a lot of projectiles and explosions. So we got to be kind of careful if we fight him. In fact, he kind of destroys your world a little bit. So any tips you could give me for fighting him without destroying the world would be awesome. Um, I'm thinking since he is a slime, we could fight him in the middle of the ocean so that his projectiles don't explode and destroy the world. Um, but we do have to be careful because he shoots off like a thousand gas balls for a fight or, or even more. And so a couple episodes ago, we were talking about redoing the bedroom. And this is what I've come up with. You're going to have to tell me what you think, though, because I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot to, to kind of take in. I spent a couple hours on this. Hey, you're supposed to be closed. Uh, so first of all, we got a lot of just little decorations kind of embedded in the bedroom here. Using the mob heads data pack and the armor stands data pack to, to kind of uh, modify and tweak things a little bit. So, for example, we got this little lamp, which I think is awesome. And if you notice, this armor statue is in the ground just a little bit so that we could fit a shelf right above it. Um, and I think it looks good. I'm going to be asking for a lot of feedback from this particular build, though, because I'm not very good at using the mob heads or rather decorating at all in for that matter. 
Um, and this, so this is our main bedroom itself. We got uh, our Maelstrom, which is just a unique item from the RPG data pack. And a couple of mob heads for the, you know, for the color and, and the added little bonus detail and variation. We got a buried treasure map here, which I actually turned the item frame invisible. And then we have white concrete behind there. And I think it looks a little bit better than in a normal item frame, as well as our book that we read every night going to bed. <laughs> and uh, just like a random sword and, and uh, rabbit's foot for some reason, as well as like a hidden little ender chest. And the room isn't done yet. I can't place a block over there yet because there's an invisible armor stand in the way. And so I have to move the armor stand forward a bit before I can finish this little part up. And we also have a bunch of different bookshelves, which I think add a lot of add a lot of color and detail overall, which I like. Little jukebox with a disc, another mob head, and for some reason a cartographer table. <laughs> and then here's our Eye of Kronos that we got this episode. Uh, it's just supposed to be like a little clock. I think it fits good here. And we have some just some drawers and stuff for our, our miscellaneous items that we need in our bedroom. Now, some feedback I could ask for you is take a look at this armor stand and compare it to this one. You see their backgrounds? This one has stripped birch logs and this one has brick. Which one's better? Honestly, I'm leaning towards the brick because it matches the red here a little bit more and it's just a little bit of a color variation um, while also not adding like a huge amount of distracting detail. But uh, this looks pretty good too because it highlights the armor stand. So I don't know. And also, what do you guys think of the dried kelp blocks? I used a lot of dried kelp in our original parts of our world, like our early builds. It was one of the only decoration blocks we had. So I figured it fit well here. And I know a lot of people don't like it either. I personally think it goes well with the dark oak, but I don't know. You guys should probably let me know about that. So yeah, pretty cool bedroom though. I'm pretty proud of it. The map's kind of freaking out from here. Uh, here's our new exit. And entrance, I guess, to the bedroom from underwater. And then also, this 2 by one hole here will only open up. Once we're all done here, it'll only open up at night. Otherwise, it'll be closed. Now, the other thing I wanted to do for our bedroom was expand this direction and have some tools here. At, like, in case we die and we need to restock in an emergency way. And I thought a cool and easy way to do that would be to use dispensers. And so I think all we have to do actually is just place like four or five of them. So one dispenser for your boots, one for your pants, one for your chest plate, and one for your helmet. And then maybe to make it even, maybe a totem of undying and a sword or something like that. Or food or maybe, I don't know. Um, but let's just, let's just double check that that's, this works. So I think all you have to do is power them with an item inside. So let's put our pants inside. We step on this. If we step on this. There you go. Yeah, we got it equipped. Okay. So that does work. Um, we'll just have to figure out a way to power these top ones at the press of a pressure plate as well. Maybe we'll put the pressure plate back one. And then we'll cover this up. So like you walk into the closet, get equipped, and then you walk out and you're done. That might be a good idea. And so we'll have armor and sword there and maybe some food. And over here, we'll probably have tools and rockets and torches maybe an ender chest be dispensed as well so then that way you can just fast equipped if we need to go grab our stuff fast or if the worst happens and we die and lose everything we have like an easy way to get back up here oh way. okay so take a look at these doorways by the way i really like how they turned out they are very hobbity inspired <laughs> and uh kind of i've seen a lot of other people do them too so they're, they're a good design. And I've been thinking about how we can do this. So we're going to have armor, armor. We're going to have sword, totem of undying. And then through the floor, we're going to have half a stack of stake come out every time you dispense or activate this. Oh. So we're going to have um, just like droppers in the ground, probably like 16 of them. And we'll just have them activate twice. So exactly like this. It flow into water that goes up to the stream and then you can pick them up through the trap door there. So we just threw a bunch of stone there. We're going to pick it up through the ground just like that. And over here, we're going to have pickaxe, shovel, 
and normal axe. And then we're going to have an elytra. But if you activate the elytra one, then same kind of dealio. We're going to have rockets come through the ground automatically. And maybe like half a stack of those. So, you know, a little bit more convenient and quality of life. I would just got to figure out the redstone part of it. That's going to have to wait until another episode. We're kind of running out of time here, and I want to receive some feedback from you guys before I keep going there. Um, you guys have been so kind to me. Seriously, I really appreciate all the feedback and help you've been giving me in, in building our world together. Um, obviously, we need that. Obviously, I need that help. So um, thank you again. I really appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Uh, don't freeze your butts off. Eat lots of good food and enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye.